We're partners. Now, what I'm going to do for about the next 45 minutes or so is take you through a little bit of a tour of eight new platform announcements that form really the foundation of Windows Phone 8 and deliver features and benefits to all of those audiences on the basis of this new shared core. What we are not doing today is disclosing all of the end user features. We have some pretty cool things to talk about that you're not going to get to hear about today. What we're going to do instead is focus on the platform and how that improves things for consumers, developers, and hardware vendors. So keep that in mind as I take you through the tour of eight. We'll start out, number one, Windows Phone 8 will support the latest and greatest hardware this fall. The shared core with its kernel, um, in particular, has been optimized for, over the course of many years, multi-core chips. In fact, the shared kernel that we'll be shipping in Windows Phone 8 has already been run on 64 core machines on Windows desktop PCs and servers. This is a great architecture that's been optimized over years, and the experience that people have had on Windows Phone single core devices in the past is gonna get much, much better as it runs on dual core devices and beyond in the future. The work that we've been doing so far in building Windows Phone 8 has been focused on dual core for this fall. And we are doing all the kinds of optimization and performance enhancements on multi-core first for Windows 8 devices so that consumers get the real benefit of battery life and great performance on their new Windows Phone 8 devices. The next thing we're doing in terms of hardware enhancements is scaling up our support for screen resolutions. When we launched Windows Phone 7, we picked one screen resolution. And we did that in large part to give the ecosystem focus on a single target. So it would be easier for ISVs to implement apps that would be known to work great on every Windows phone. We feel that now is the right time to expand that screen resolution, so we're moving up and adding two new resolutions, both in high definition. We'll be adding a standard 720p, screen resolution, and the even higher res WXGA, you can sort of think of that as 720p plus, with its 768 uh, lines of resolution when you're in landscape mode. We made a very intentional choice here and have made sure that we have the graphics hardware support so that all of the existing Windows Phone 7.5 apps will run great with no modification on these new resolutions. If you're a developer, your app is going to run and look terrific, and I'm going to show you some examples of this later. The resolution change is invisible to you. Now, of course, if you want to go exploit the new resolution, you're welcome to do that, and we make that possible, but it's not necessary. As an end user, all the things that you would expect to work still work, but your experience just gets better. Third, we're introducing removable micro SD support as a core part of the platform. And this core micro SD support spans both the PC and the phone. The scenarios are valuable both to consumers but also to developers and to hardware vendors. Um, what this enables that's different than what Windows Phone 7.5 has today is that an end user can add a micro SD card months after they buy the phone, expanding their storage, and then they can use it to transfer content from their PC to their phone, from phone to phone, can be used as a distribution vehicle for apps, and it supports all these things in a very natural, integrated way in the Metro experience. We didn't want to deliver this feature until we could do it in a way that would be easy to use, predictable, and high performant, and we think we've got that nailed in Windows Phone 8. Not only does this help consumers, but it helps our hardware vendors and mobile operators as well, because it lets them range and stock phones in stores that are lower cost at time of purchase, because they don't need to put as much storage in the phone to begin with. If a user needs it, they can always add it later. So these are Three important things that are going to help Windows Phone scale up and scale down on great new hardware this fall. I mentioned some of the core technologies that are shared in this shared, shared core, the kernel, networking, multimedia. One of the areas that we've actually been doing code sharing for a while is in our number two platform feature, IE10. Once again this year, we will have the latest and greatest Internet Explorer built into Windows Phone 8, and that core HTML rendering and JavaScript technology 
is the same between windows on your slate or your laptop or your desktop and windows on your phone. It's the same rendering, which means that HTML authors, website authors, can author once, test on Windows PCs or laptops or, or slates, and know that the same markup in JavaScript will work on the phone. Of course, this year we haven't stopped in terms of its capability, and a few of the areas that we've added new benefits for uh, end users and web authors is for end users, we're including the smart screen anti-phishing technology that's part of Internet Explorer today. And I'll show you that a little bit later and talk about that benefit. For web authors, though, equally good for end users, the, the biggest change is our support for the HTML5 standard, filling that out even more, particularly this year including touch support, and improving our JavaScript performance. In fact, our JavaScript performance has gotten so good that we are proud to show uh, the Sun Spider measurement. This is in milliseconds, so lower is better. Here's how Windows Phone 8's current builds of IE 10 stack up against current phone competition. And these are no slouch phones. These are fast, powerful, dual-core phones in general here. And this is Windows 8 performing against them on similar dual-core hardware. So we're proud to see Internet Explorer technology from the line of desktop to laptop to slate to phone all improve and be part of the benefit that all our customers will get this fall with Windows Phone 8. Um, if you think about the web as kind of a platform where web authors are writing web apps and delivering applications to users, and the fact of the code being the same, creating benefit for those web developers, well, there's another class of developers that we have big, exciting news for as a result of the shared core. And that is native code developers. And in particular, thank you. Go ahead, it's all right. If you're a native code developer and you've been waiting for this, we're, we're happy to hear that you're happy. Um, the biggest effect that we think this will have on Windows Phone 8 is we're going to see some freaking killer games this year. And later on, you're going to get to see some examples of some of the work that's in progress. Um, but there are a whole lot of benefits that come out of a shared architecture between Windows on PCs and laptops and slates and Windows on the phone. Um, they both share DirectX. They both share common graphics drivers. And what this means is a game developer who authors an unbelievable, detail, rich, immersive, compelling game experience for the PC has a super easy port of their native game to the phone. And with our shared core, we're going to be scaling up the capability of that phone hardware. So you're going to see some beefy, powerful phones running some amazing games this year. Another scenario that's actually quite beneficial in our support for native code is portability. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from developers who have written some complex apps on iOS or Android using those platforms' native code capability. And today, it's more difficult than we or they would like to move those apps to Windows Phone. It's been a little bit of drag on us getting some apps. But with native code support, suddenly, portability becomes much more easy for developers with that kind of investment. The net of this, in our opinion, is that we will see more apps, we'll see bigger important apps coming faster, and we're going to see some unbelievably beautiful and immersive games running on Windows Phone like, like no games we've seen before. Going back to sort of hardware, there's another hardware feature that we're enabling that spans benefit from end user to hardware vendor to developer, and that is support for native NFC. And I raise this as a comment as part of the shared core because our support for NFC isn't limited to the phone. The shared Windows core supports NFC hardware and enables NFC scenarios between phones and laptops, slates, and PCs. And later on, I'm going to give you a demo of some of the specific things that we're enabling both in our built-in experience and with third-party apps because of the great, simple, connectivity that's made possible via NFC. NFC is kind of a good segue to another good platform benefit, um, and that is Windows Phone 8 will include what we think will be the most complete wallet experience on any smartphone this fall. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what I mean and why we think this is going to be the most complete wallet experience. 
If you think about the goal of a wallet on a phone, our new wallet hub probably has the same goal as any other wallet on any other phone, which is to effectively replace the physical wallet that you might have in your pocket. And that physical wallet does a number of things. It stores your credit cards and your debit cards. It stores your membership cards, you know, your AAA or your frequent flyer. It stores things like coupons. It lets you take them out and pay for things. Our wallet does all of that. It both integrates third-party services into the wallet experience when you install a third-party app. So you have one place to go to see account balances, to see your frequent flyer information, or to pull a coupon out to redeem it. it integrates that via a third-party app API. It also supports secure NFC payments. So if you have a phone with an NFC chip built in, and in our case, a SIM from your mobile operator that has a secure element, we call this a secure SIM, a secure SIM enables your phone to be scanned at point of sale so that you can use those cards in your wallet to make purchases and payments. Our wallet spans the full range of scenarios, including secure payment to third-party scenarios like your frequent flyer card. And one of the things that's interesting about this, as this area has developed within the smartphone face, sorry, within the smartphone area, we've seen Google with their wallet enable secure NFC payments by putting the secure element in the device. And an unfortunate side effect for that has been that some mobile operators have chosen to remove the Google wallet because the mobile operators themselves want to provision those secure elements and enable their customers to maintain their secure payment instruments as they move from one phone to the next. In general, the, the mobile operators prefer the model of a secure element on the SIM. And in many ways, that's better for end users too because it means easy transition from one phone to the next. Our model works with mobile operators to deliver secure element on the SIM, and that's different than Google's model. Like Apple's model, our wallet also provides for integration with third-party apps and services. I'm going to give you a demo of this, so everything I'm describing is going to make more sense when you see the real code in action. But before I get to that, I do want to transition over and let you hear firsthand from our lead mobile operator partner on wallet, and that is Orange in France. Orange has been a pioneer in this area working on Wallet and we've been partnering deeply with Orange to make sure we have the right technology and the right service infrastructure to deliver an experience that will be delightful for end users. So let's cut to a video of Yves Metra from Orange talking about our Wallet. We have been the first one in Europe to deploy the NFC transaction system. You guys, you have been able to put in the same experience something very easy and very convenient for customers. You have also be capable to align your solution with a GSMA recommendation. And more important, you provide with a SIM secure element of operator, an incredible secure solution. Wallet Hub solution is exactly what developer needs in order to provide our customers a very friendly and a very safe journey towards their mobile transaction. Wallet Up Secure SIM solution is really the next step of the future mobile phone transaction. Let me wrap